Good morning, folks. Today we've got several science stories to share about solar storms and their impacts here on Earth. From the ionosphere to the ground, they are global events. We'll also check out the tropics and a relevant earthquake, but we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. We had a few more solar flares, but nothing threatening to be aimed our way. Filaments remain stable and the coronal hole stream is ending. We've got eruptive potential for sure, but it was another day where little occurred facing Earth. Like I said, several M-class solar flares, especially this morning, and while at first glance my head went to the central sunspots and those developing top left on the north, these two groupings are not where the flares occurred despite our need to keep watching them. You can see here the primary flashing is near the limbs, the far right and left side, departing spots, incoming small spots, but none of the flashing at the central spots facing the Earth. The solar wind is now calming back as well, plasma speed slowly dropping the last 12 hours and geomagnetic conditions never did reach those storm levels. Event is ending now as things return to quiet. We'll keep watching. And up next we are going to the weather. We are in the South Indian Ocean where a tropical system is charging west towards Madagascar and Africa. It may weaken slightly before impact, but the storm is expected to deliver some pretty intense rainfalls. Folks, the top quake of the day was a 5.8 in Nevada. Very unusual for such a quake in that location, and it's on the heels of the magnitude 7 in California and those multiple 6s we had in Alaska. We are eyes wide open on the seismographs here today. Moving on to the science articles where we begin with an extreme response to the May 2024 solar storm in the ionosphere. We've not only gone over evidence of record impacts during that storm, but how they should have never happened without the weakening of the magnetic protection in the ongoing pole shift. Our planet vulnerable in another way demonstrated here and here. A record thermospheric cooling took place during that storm, one that even exceeded the 2003 Halloween superstorm. It's another bad sign, since the solar flares back then were about 5 to 10 times stronger than earlier this year. But in our progressing magnetic pole shift, we're seeing more and more of those Earth effects as our planet's vulnerability heads towards the ceiling. One more example of that here, data aggregation from around the world is wrapping up showing how much farming is at risk due to a newfound reliance on GPS technology. Big farms and indeed anyone who uses that equipment saw major anomalies in May, but also in October when an even smaller solar storm struck. Folks, this is well within the realm of solar impact science. Just not at the level of solar activity we've been seeing. It's very weak space weather acting like a solar hurricane when it reaches Earth, because our planetary shields are down and dropping. Folks, big event coming up on Saturday at Observer Ranch, our first special guest speaker. Would be a great weekend to come out to Observer Ranch and see what we've got going on, and we would love to see you. ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.